Welcome to the Totally Honest Kitchen. I'm Mark. Today we are making cottage pie. So we're going to start by preheating our oven to 350 degrees and buttering a 13 by 9 casserole dish. For those of you that are new to the realm of cooking, buttering just means that you're smearing butter on every surface of the pan. These glass baking dishes are nice because you can see where all the butter is. You, though usually even with the metal ones you can see it. Just way easier with the glass, especially under the light. Once that's done, we can go ahead and set the dish aside for right now. And now we're going to go ahead and peel about three and a half pounds of potatoes. I'll be back once these are peeled. A short time later and our potatoes are ready to cut up. We're just looking for one inch chunks. So if you want, you can just cut off the ends where they become kind of uneven. Put them to the side. Cut them straight down. And then you just chunk them off at about the one inch mark. It's not a sci it's not science class, so you know you will have to cut them down a little bit here and there because they're not totally even. But you'll get pretty close. Don't make yourself crazy with it though. Just swap those for a minute. Anybody that looks uneven or too big, just cut them down. They'll be fine. The trick here is to make sure that you don't cut them too big or too small, like these are too small. And this is about three and a half pounds of potatoes. As you cut them down, they will be less, there will be less potatoes. So it's probably gonna be more like three pounds by the time I'm done with all this. The next step is to take this and cover it with water until there's about an inch above it. Then we're going to go ahead and bring it to a boil on high heat. You are free, of course, to multitask while you do all this, set everything all up at once. It's just, I'm doing this in a narrative flow so that you can see how it, you know, goes together. Tablespoon and we'll say a half of salt. They say salty like the sea. I'm gonna grab my favorite spoon, Bernie. We'll get to him in a minute. And while that's going, I'm gonna start prepping the vegetables for the other thing. So we're going to take our three celery stalks. First, we're gonna cut them down so that they are celery sticks or celery hearts. Give them a quick rinse under the tap and just go ahead and do that. Maybe don't do all three at once. Maybe do it the same way. You could probably dice these if you want. I'm not gonna. Now we're gonna go ahead and peel our carrots. Once everybody's peeled, we're gonna go ahead and cut them up. Oops, missed a spot. Whoopsie doodle. Embarrassing. We're also going to keep an eye on our potato water. Go ahead and cut your carrots up. The great thing about cottage pie is that if you already made the potato soup from a couple weeks ago, you have all the ingredients for cottage pie. So if you're looking for multiple meals in one week, you can just stock up on carrots, celery, and potatoes and potentially have two big meals different form factor, different flavor profiles, so you won't necessarily get sick of them. Anyway, cut these up, then we'll be back. Okay, my carrots are done. I'm gonna go ahead and check on my potatoes just for giggles and grins. Okay, they're nowhere near done as I anticipated. So we'll be back once our potatoes finish boiling. Okay, once it starts boiling, we're gonna lower the heat to whatever temperature maintains the boil, probably medium high. And then we're just gonna keep cooking them until they're soft enough that a knife will pass through them. Okay, I did have to watch it. 
I expected this to take more like 15 minutes, but they are all, even the larger than life chunks are pierceable with a knife very easily. So we're gonna go ahead and strain it through a colander and then mash it. Obviously, put the colander in your sink or on something, don't put it, <laughs> well, obviously put it on your sink. Whether you wanna put it in a bowl or something, you can do that, I'm not gonna stop you. So I'm gonna go ahead and straighten this now. Now, once we've strained it, we're gonna throw it back in the pot on medium high heat and we're gonna let the water evaporate so we're gonna twiddle it around with Bernie just for a minute or two just let the all that evaporate so now we're gonna go ahead and commence to mashing oh wait I skipped a step uh oh while I'm mashing I'm gonna cut the heat on that real quick uh we're gonna take two-thirds cup of milk and six cups or Get the words out, Mark. We're gonna take two thirds cup of milk and six tea, uh, tablespoons of butter. Melt them real quick. Pour them over the potatoes after we've mashed them. I'm gonna go ahead and commence to mash them. Because I spaced on the butter mixture, we're just gonna put half a, table, half a teaspoon of black pepper in here. Normally you would use white pepper so that it kind of blends, but this isn't really the mashed potatoes episode. This is the cottage pie episode, which is different. And while that's going, we'll mix up, mince up some garlic real quick. See that came, that finished just a little bit before it was, I thought it was gonna. To my folly. Crush that. Crush that. So about four cloves of garlic crushed. Then we're gonna mince it. Don't let it boil. Pour that over our potatoes. Give it another good mash. Now, we don't want to work them too much because that's what makes them gummy. If it seems like it's too stiff, we're going to add a little bit more milk. And this does seem a little stiff, so maybe we should have gone three-fourths or more like a cup. But we'll do the ocular pat down and see. Okay, yeah, that looks okay. A little bespeckled from our pepper indiscretion, but I won't tell if you won't, eh? Go ahead and chuck in your garlic. We're also gonna throw in about a cup of cheddar cheese. I shredded this by hand last night. I do recommend shredding your own cheese. Now we can get that out of the way. Okay, we're gonna add three tablespoons of vegetable oil to start. We're gonna go ahead and put our celery and our carrots in. And while they're starting, I'm gonna go ahead and mince this onion that I probably should have minced half an hour ago. Remember, cut the end off. Cut it in half. We're gonna go ahead and cut her down. Use the trick to cut the onion quickly. That was kind of a whoopsie doodle. This was supposed to be done by now. Occasionally twiddle this around so that everybody gets some heat, not just the ones that were on top. Go ahead and drop in your onion.
We're also going to take this opportunity to add approximately half a cup of frozen peas. Can probably go even more than that. Actually, yeah, let's go a whole cup. Why not? I like peas. Okay, leave that go for a little bit. We're waiting for them to get a little tender and we're waiting for our onions to start to turn translucent, but we don't want anybody to get brown. In a minute, we're gonna, well, once that happens, we'll throw in the beef. We're gonna go ahead and prep three more cloves of garlic. You'll see why in a minute. Be careful, don't cut your hand off during this process. If I cut my hand dur off during an episode of this, I will be sad and then I will laugh. It looks like I did just make myself bleed my own blood a little bit, which not ideal. Please do not try to crush garlic with the blade and your fist. That would be a stupid decision. Getting it hooked for a hand would be ultimate level whoopsie doodle. Now we're not going to mince it here so much as chop it up just so that we can disperse it later. But we've already cut it, so it should be, you know, easy. Easy peasy. And we're just gonna let this cook for a little while. Starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and add the beef. This is almost two pounds. I think it was like 1.89. Just break it up and let it cook. You don't have to chop it all the way up, obviously. I'm just breaking it up a little extra because I get the sense it was a little firm in the middle. My refrigerator takes its job very seriously and the dial isn't very high, but it still takes its job very seriously. So here we are. Anyway, well, that's working. I'm gonna go ahead and mince a few sprigs of rosemary and thyme now the goal here is to wind up with about a tablespoon of each by the time we're done remember to get the rosemary off you just run your fingers down it like this same thing for the thyme so now we're going to cut it all up you don't need to go super fine on this i don't think <laughs> we'll find out Okay, flip this around. Yep, that's a pretty good mix. He says, surprised. I definitely have more time than rosemary, but that's okay. I'll be honest with you, Internet. I will pluck rosemary until I get bored, and then I stop. There, confession over. We're going to let this cook a little while until this is brown, and then we're pretty much done. We have to make the sauce yet, but the sauce just goes in there. Be right back. Okay, it's looking pretty close to done, so what we're going to do is try to drain off as much of the fat as we can. You can see there I've already started. The question here will be how much can I drain off before I spill all of this all over the counter? And probably not that much, to be honest with you. Okay, that's good. Notice I did turn the flame off for that because I was draining pretty close to the flame and you do not want an apartment fire. An apartment fire would be bad. Okay. There's still a lot in there, but that's fine. Fat is flavor. You don't want to get rid of all of the flavor. It's enough to coat the bottom of the pan so that when we add our tablespoon of flour, there's something to adhere to. Pop the rawness off of Bernie. Go ahead and fiddle about with that. Now here we're just waiting for the raw spell to dissipate. Here, we are just waiting for the raw smell to go away. Careful not to hurl too much of it. We're gonna go ahead and make a little space in the middle. We're gonna 
Bip in a tablespoon of tomato paste. Then we're gonna bap in a cup of beef broth. Now Worcestershire sauce is in most of these recipes. Only one or two left it out. And that's anywhere from one tablespoon to four tablespoons. So I'm going with about three. We'll say three. Why not? This is where we start getting optional right most recipes here call for a red wine like uh i don't know i'd use the shiraz just because a little spice to it here i'm adding a beer this comes from the recipe that they did on binging with babish and i liked that idea this is actually a chocolate dessert stout a very dark beer but i feel like this will be very yummy and we'll see if i'm right you know Okay, so now we've got this thing here. We're waiting for it to become a sauce. So we're gonna let it thicken, but first we're gonna add these before I forget. Then I'm gonna turn around and check and see if there's anything else on my prep table that I forgot about. There doesn't appear to be anything else on my prep table that I forgot about. So I'm gonna let this go for like five to eight minutes. Might take 10. Might take more. And we'll see if it thickens. It should thicken. She's not thickening quite as fast as I would prefer. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick mix around with her in this little glass bowl. Now some people would say to me, you know Mark, you should probably not do that because you should not cook with raw flour. You should let the flour cook. Yes, but with small amounts like this, I don't think we're really gonna see that much of a difference. I could be mistaken, but I made a little slurry and now I'm just gonna dump her in. See if that helps a little bit, you know. And if it doesn't, oh well, we tried. That is one of my mottos. Oh well. I tried. Okay. Yeah, that's a little better. That's a little better. Now we're cooking with fire. Look at that. Yeah, we got this nice little path going. The levels dropped immediately. Okay, time for assembly. Get this out of the way. Wouldn't it be funny if I just threw it? I'm not going to throw it, don't worry. Remember that casserole dish we buttered? Here she is. Actually, this is looking kind of like a lot and I don't trust it. That's looking like a lot and I worry that my 13 by nine pan is not big enough to contain the awesomeness with which I have wrought. So we're gonna go ahead and but <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and butter this 13 by nine pan. Buttering just means I'm not going to teach you how to butter again, don't worry. Uh, I'll be back in a second. If your 13 by 9 pan is taller than mine, absolutely do that. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in my biggest casserole dish. And now we're going to cover it with our mashed potatoes. Now, I have read a couple things about this in my, in my research. And at least one source said that if you are one of those people that doesn't like your potatoes layer to sink into your meat and vegetable layer, you can, in fact, put it in the fridge beforehand. I personally like that, so I don't care. This is kind of starting to look like I've created a monster. Looks like something somebody's kids made in art class. That's okay though, we'll be fine. If this were just a little bit deeper, I think we'd be fine. I mean, we're still fine. It looks good. We're taking a fork and we're making craggles. Why are we making craggles? Because it'll crisp it up. I know it doesn't look appetizing, but trust me, those craggles will crisp up and it'll be good. 
optionally here you can put a little bit of cheese so i'm going to go ahead and do that so we're going to pop this into a 350 degree oven for half an hour and then we'll be back to plate and consume okay it's been about 30 minutes we could probably get a little bit more crust if we left it in there for a little bit longer but the problem with chasing a fallen star like that is that sometimes you get burned and I don't want to burn a beautiful casserole like this because wow that's good look at that it's just bubbling away okay I'm gonna let it sit for five or ten minutes so that it stops boiling and then I'm gonna tear into it we've given it a few minutes and it's time to serve ourselves a little bit of this cottage pie There we go. If I'd been thinking about it, I probably would have gotten something like chives or green onions to sprinkle on the top to make it a little bit more Instagram worthy. But look at this. It is the real deal. Okay, she looks good, but how does she taste? Very good. Very layered. I recommend this. But me and this bowl have a little alone time that we've got to, that we want together. So like subscribe click that little bell share my recipes with a friend please it really helps us out i'll see you next wednesday bye